Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Today I'm making a quick, wonky coffee stack sign for my kitchen closet door. Also, I'm a plaid ambassador and all of the products I use today will be plaid products. Let's get into it. So, after settling on a design, I did a sketch and then traced it onto my MDF and cut it out using my scroll saw. The first thing I'll do is I'll paint my entire surface black, including the sides. If you've watched me before, you know that I will cut from cardstock the different elements of my project to trace them onto my surface. I do this so if I need to make the same piece again, I'll have consistency. So I've cut out my cups and coffee pot and with a white pencil, I'll trace them onto my piece. This really helps with projects like this that have several elements. Next, I'll freehand the cup opening where the coffee will be. I'll paint my top cup with Ceram Code Sweet Plush. And I'll be doing what I call the coloring book technique, which basically means that there will be a more painterly effect. In other words, not super neat, visibly strokey. I want some of the black to show, especially along the sides. You'll see what I mean the further we get into it. The middle cup will be Ceram Coat Bittersweet Orange. Since this color is very sheer, I'll do three coats and it'll still look strokey. It kinda has like a chalkboard effect. For the bottom cup, I'll be using GP Purple, that's also a Ceram Coat acrylic paint, and all supplies will be listed in the description box. I'd like for that opening 
of the handle to be a little larger. So I'll just go back in with some black paint and make it larger. I base coat the pot with drizzle gray. With my white pencil, I'll sketch out the steam from the pot, leaving some black on the sides. And I'll paint it in with white. I'm using Folk Art Coffee Bean for the coffee. Also, I'm not filling that entire space. I am leaving some of the black visible in the cup. And I'll be using my favorite medium, floating medium, to add details. I dip my brush into the float and work it into the bristles. I'll side load by scooping up some GP Purple onto the corner of my brush. I'll stroke it onto my plate to get that gradient of color. Keeping the color side of my brush to the edge of the steam, I'll paint in some swirls. I reload my brush as needed. As I paint in the swirls, I'll keep my brush as perpendicular to my piece as possible. This allows the bristles to fan out to give me a really nice rounded swirl effect. I love painting the swirls. The swirls are a lot of fun. Wee! It's the little things. Aw, that's our last swirl. And since I already have it on the go, I'll use my GP Purple to shade my coffee pot too. And I'll shade the top and middle cups with the GP Purple as well. I 
And now I'm just shading in the rounded shape of the cup. Same here on the middle cup, just kind of shading in the actual shape of the cup in the saucer, giving it some definition. Using my dirty brush, I'll load it with tangerine and shade the bottom cup. And you know, I like to build my color, so I'll be floating the pot and the other cups with tangerine too. Still using my dirty brush, the next layer will be passion. All but the steam will get shaded, each cup and the pot. I'm starting with the middle cup because that still needs to be better defined, but the other cups and the pot will, will be shaded also. My next layer of color will be with Amber Glow, which is a really pretty reddish orange or orangey red, whichever you prefer.
I'll float the coffee with the appropriately entitled latte. And finally, with a clean brush, a highlight with white. I love doing pieces like this. You can be as wonky and as venturous as you like, just like when you were a kid coloring in your coloring book. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be fun. I find this kind of painting really relaxing. And a project like this lets you work out what you like and what you don't, what works and what maybe doesn't. I cut some vinyl to say coffee break in the Cami Ray font and I'm just going to add it right there to the front of the pot. Since this is going to hang on a door, I'm going to draw a hole right at the top there. I've cut a length of 19 gauge wire which I'm going to wrap around my paint bottle to make my hanger. Once I have it wrapped around the bottle, I'll cross it so that the wire is right up against the bottle and I'll give it a couple twists. I'm going to add some beads to the wire. So I have this small black bead that I'll just slide on and then I'll give a couple more twists to the wire. Next I'll add the cylindrical bead. This bead's so pretty. It's orange and purple glass. A couple more twists. And I'll add another black square bead. And I'll pull that bottle right out of there. I'll push the wire right through the hole. And I'll twist it around itself using needle nose pliers. Ta-da, finished. Only thing left to do is to spray it with clear matte sealer. This is gonna look so cute on my closet door in my kitchen. I love it. I hope today's project inspires you to pull out your paint and just give it a go. What do you got to lose? You might love it, you might hate it, but I guarantee you'll have fun. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Lots of really fun upcoming videos. I upload weekly, usually on Fridays, unless I'm participating in a playlist. So. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll see you next time. Up all night with Monica.